Hi everyone, my name is Steve. How many pathologies have you encountered in acquaintances, friends, and in general? I'm talking about those abnormalities like a special sense of smell or a double tongue. Yes, some of these could be called a gift or a talent. But now I'm going to tell you about myself, and you will help me decide whether it is a gift or a real curse. Personally, I choose both. I was born as the latest child in my family, with a total of three brothers and two sisters. Our parents are very religious people. They go to church every Sunday, they pray before they eat, before they go to bed, and before they go to the bathroom. Okay, I'm kidding about the last one. But once I did hear my father, who was constipated, praying while sitting on the toilet. He assures me that God helped him, but I think the laxative I put in his tea helped him a little too. Anyway, all my brothers and sisters willingly did things related to religion and the church. Some even went to help as volunteers to clean there, and my mother sometimes gave a good amount of money for a donation, though we saved up the money with difficulty. I will say at once, I do not condemn such activities, but I prefer to abstain from them. But my mother didn't want to hear rejection. She always said that our family was going to hell because of me. Mum, I had a burger today. Am I going to hell too? Why is that? I forgot to pray before I did it. How could you? You ungrateful pig. You shame us before God. Now, to atone for our sin, we will have to... And she listed a series of things I would have to do to redeem myself. One day I came home tired and angry after school. It had been a busy day and Mrs. Fard, our neighbour, was visiting. I hated her because she was the one who was winding up my mother with her unhealthy bigotry towards the church. This madam sat there and said that we had to raise the whole town for an emergency sewer repair at the church and it cost about $4,000. When I heard that, I was shocked. I said, what's a sewer pipe for in a church? Well, what for? That's where our Holy Father and other syllables of the Lord reside. They need to wash, go to the bathroom, especially before prayers or events. Well, there is a God for that. What are you talking about, young man? Like, just ask him to smell good and not go to the bathroom. He'll help you, surely. You're treating people for disability somehow. You tell me that 20 years ago some dude stood up and walked in front of everyone, even though he didn't have any legs. Steve, go to your room. I was just babbling, for which I got it. Mrs. Fard shouted to me in the back that she would pray for me, and tonight I would have an insight like my eyes would open, and I would see things differently. Then she came into my room a couple of hours later and offered me lemonade and said she didn't want to fight because anger was a sin. I pretended to be supportive, we had a drink and she left. I didn't sleep well all night and I woke up in the morning with a terrible headache. It was just bursting. My mother prayed as she always did and then I went to school. But I didn't make it. In the middle of the road I suddenly felt very sick. I rubbed my eyes forcefully and realised that I couldn't see very well that my heart was pounding and that I couldn't control my vision. Goddamn hunchback, I yelled, and I almost got hit by a car. I fell to the curb and a passerby came up to me and helped me. I looked at him and my vision seemed to focus, and then I didn't understand what had happened at all. At some point, this strange dude started moving very slowly. He sort of picked me up, asked me how it was, and was just about to move away when a motorcyclist came up behind him, almost hitting him. I reacted, pulled him towards me, and then the motorcyclist took off sharply. The passerby was freaking out. He said I was super reactive and saved his life. But in fact, it was very, very slow. I didn't understand why. Then I was abruptly reminded of the old woman's words that I would see, it can't be, I said to myself. Then I got up and went to school. But even there, all was not good. As soon as I entered, I saw that the repairman was painting the roof. A heavy can of paint began to fall down where my classmate Mimi was standing. I quickly ran up and pushed her to the side. The paint can fell on the spot where she was standing. It might have fallen on her head. Awesome, Steve, you're my superhero. Didn't you see that fall? It all happened so fast. I didn't even realise it right away. How did you see it? I don't know. I just saw it, that's all. I wondered why I had such a big difference in time with other people, or rather in my vision. After school, I told my mum about everything. At first, she recalled Mrs. Fard's words. She said she was right. Then it suddenly hit her. She said she was cursed for her bullying. I regretted telling her. Mum called the old woman and she came to our house. She asked a few questions and then said I was sick. I needed to be treated because I had dark forces in me. I didn't believe her, of course. I argued and swore. I 
and she told me that evil spirits are always aggressive. Man, my mum got hysterical after she said that. She got down on her knees in the middle of the room and started praying. Mrs. Fard said there was a quick and accurate way to redeem herself. It was a donation, and mum blew up. We'll pay the full cost of the pipe repairs, she said. What, mum? We don't have that kind of money. God has sent us a test, and we will fight. If I have a son like that, then I should think about my sins. What son? Am I defective or something? You're a sinner, like me, like all of us. And then Mrs. Fard started praying to the whole room. Anyway, my folks took out a loan and really gave the money for the pipes. Mrs. Fard was pleased and said her sins were absolved. But as it turned out, there was no such thing. My sudden slow motion effect happened again. Only this time, my little sister and I were at the market buying vegetables. I saw that unfamiliar man run up again and snatch my sister's purse. At that moment, I hit him in the head with a bag of cabbage. He fell to the ground in surprise, and I managed to throw tomatoes at him. And my little sister said it all happened so fast too. Then it wasn't funny, because that's not how normal stuff is, is it? On the one hand, it was fun to help people, but on the other, you have no idea how much my head hurt after those effects. It was like my eyes were going to pop out of my head. Mrs. Fard, may I see you? Ah, oh, Steve, come in, of course. As soon as I entered her house, I saw the new furniture. It wasn't unpacked yet. Mrs. Fard first let me in and then offered to go out into the yard, taking a look at the fact that the house was a mess. I forgot to tell you, the old lady was sort of the mayor's right-hand man, only he couldn't be seen or heard, and she was running around and poking her nose everywhere. Finally, we sat down to talk, and I told her that we had made the donation, but I wasn't feeling any better. She was embarrassed, and then she said she would pray for me. And immediately in front of me, a truckload of boxes of appliance arrived. Mrs. Fard quickly escorted me out, and I said goodbye, and hid behind the truck, and heard her telling someone on the phone that she had just withdrawn $4,000, and was ready to place another order for wallpaper in the bedroom. This seems strange, so I went to the church. There I met one of the sisters at the entrance, and asked to see the priest, but she said he was sick, and had been staying with a sister who was taking care of him for a month. But what about the collection for repairs? I mean, he announced a week ago. What repairs? We've had everything in our church for 14 years without repair. Would you like to help? We already have. I ran to Mrs. Fard's house, hid under the window and watched. The lady got a whiskey out of the drawer, smoked a cigarette and was chatting on the phone with her daughter. Yeah, found the money, yeah. Well, yes, it's not a small sum, but it's not a pity. Besides, it's not my money. Locals donated it. Not for me, I asked for the church. Do you think they'll find out? Everyone here believes me. I've been doing this for 10 years. What do you think I brought the house and renovated it with? The bitch, I thought to myself. And then she said that those who do not believe will be punished with light psychotropic drugs. I immediately remembered that she brought me the lemonade. I was much more eager than usual to go to the Sunday meeting. And my mother was more than surprised. At the end of the prayer, when Mrs. Fard wanted to play another song, I turned on my video, which I had filmed in the window of her house. The whole town was watching and listening to her words. Mrs. Fard got hysterical and tried to turn it off, but it was too late. The con woman was immediately arrested. And then it turned out that the Holy Father was sick for a reason. She had tried to poison him. Also sprinkled stuff that makes you crazy and gives you a headache. And she dared to do that to everyone. Anyway, they got the mayor too, because they were in cahoots. We sold the Fard property and did some real renovations on the church. Only this time, we controlled it ourselves. My mum and I made up, and after that, she stopped dragging me to services by force. I used to think that people who kept a personal diary were weird. I thought that only the lonely or the crazy did it. I thought so until I came across it myself. My diary not only listened to my problems, but thanks to it, I didn't make a mistake. You could say that my diary saved my life, but in return, my parents learned all my secrets. So, I'm Stella. I have parents and an older brother whose name is Justin, by the way. Our age difference is six years. Yes, this is the age when there can be no common interests between us. My brother always liked to play alone as a child. When I tried to join him, taking cars or soldiers without asking, just got really mad. He immediately threw a hysterics so that I would take my hands away, or better yet, go to another room and never visit him. I immediately cried and ran to complain about it to my mother. 
I cried out in tears that he had offended me and said he didn't want to see me. Oh, my mother always gave him a thrashing after that. I remember her always telling him that he was the eldest and should be more lenient with me. I didn't quite understand the phrase, but it was a good one. Yes, I was happy when my brother got beaten from my parents because of me. Being the youngest in the family is a pleasure. Everyone loves you, brings you all the most delicious things, often takes you to an amusement park, buys toys. All the attention goes to the little ones, and this always happens. Once, when my parents went to visit Aunt May in the hospital, Jess and I stayed home. My parents said we shouldn't go with them. My brother was left in charge. As soon as Dad's car disappeared around the corner, Jess told me to go to my room, play with my dolls, and not leave until the adults returned. I knew he meant it, and I pretended to agree to everything. After ten minutes, I left the room and went to my brother, but he was not in his room, in the living room, or in the kitchen. Then I went out to the back and saw him smoking. When my parents arrived, I naturally told my mother about it and showed her where he hid a pack of cigarettes as proof. Yes, I saw it too. Oh, Justin's face was red with anger at that moment, but I couldn't forgive him for his attitude towards me. War is war. At this point, I came up with a brilliant idea to write down all of my brother's joints, to keep a diary, so I could then ask him for anything in return for the diary. As I planned, so I did. Records, that is, dirt became even more. We could only wait for more to accumulate. I already imagined that in return for the diary, Justin buys me a house for Barbie, which I have long dreamed of. But then something unexpected happened. Remember at May? So she went back to the hospital for her procedures. She had a daughter, my little cousin Cindy. Her aunt asked her parents to look after her while she was away, and they, of course, agreed. I can't say that I was upset. We had a normal relationship. But since she came to our house, I felt that her parents pay more attention to her. At first, it looked like a sign of courtesy and respect. Then it started to cross the line. Now I was in my brother's place. Whenever I wanted to play with my toys, Cindy would come to my room and ask me to join her. I was angry because I didn't want to share. I sent her away several times. But then my mom and dad called me in. For about 30 minutes, they scolded me for my behavior, saying she was small and I should be more lenient. What? Small? Am I small? And what the hell does it mean to be condescending? Why do they say the same things to me as my brother? I couldn't believe Cindy had taken my place. I didn't know where to vent this anger, so I started writing everything down in my diary, so it was easier. Meanwhile, the hatred grew. Cindy had been with us too long, and it was as if my parents had found a replacement for me. They've never done this before. I was a little girl. I was loved. I was so offended that I felt superfluous, unnecessary, and decided to leave the house. Before I knew it, I was writing down all my thoughts and feelings in my diary. It turns out, it's easier this way. In my last entry, I wrote a farewell note and left the diary in my closet. By the time they find it and read it, I'll be far away. I packed my bag and ran out of the backyard and down the road. I walked slowly about two blocks and heard a familiar voice. Justin was shouting my name. When I waited for him, he came at me like a madman. I saw tears in his eyes for the first time. He was talking fast, telling me not to get all this crap and come home, and then he said that he loved me very much. I was surprised and started to cry too. I'd never seen him cry, and I didn't think he was so worried about me. I thought he didn't care about me. Just talked me into coming home. It turns out that when I went out through the backyard, he was standing there smoking. When he saw me, he decided to find the diary. I knew you would blackmail me with it, and I wanted to read it, but I came across the last entry. Look, Monica, we fight a lot, but know that you are my family, and I love you, sis, he said. This was unexpected. Then he immediately began to laugh it off, saying that I would not hear anything like it again. I still won't share my toys with you. You're breaking everything, he said, smiling. 
When we got home, he calmed me down and put me to bed. And when my parents came home from work, I told them everything. At first, they were taken aback with horror. My mother was hysterical. She scolded me first, then hugged me and cried. I kept saying that something might have happened to me if Justin hadn't found the diary in time and run after me. This reaction was to be expected. I burst into tears and told her that it was because of my jealousy of Cindy. Mom and Dad apologized for not paying attention. They explained that they felt sorry for Cindy and tried to help her be stronger while her mother was in the hospital. My mother made me promise not to do this again and tell her about all my experiences. By the way, Cindy's mother went on the mend and soon took her daughter home. I realized that if you hide your inner resentment, the situation only gets worse. Therefore, it is better to share your experiences with your family 